Hey, Shazam 15 here. This week's film was The Goon. Now, to give you a basic overview, The Goon is about a really nice guy who isn't the brightest bulb in the bunch and is blessed with physical strength and power and a need to use that in the defense of his fellow man. Basically, he spent his entire life working security and he holds the door open at his synagogue because he is an adopted Jewish boy. Who well, knew? Anyway, um, he, through the fact that his brother is gay and a hockey player makes a bigoted remark about homosexuals, he springs to his brother's defense and winds up beating up this hockey player really badly on his friend's ice hockey website which well this is ice hockey website and televi cable access television uh, public access television program you know think Wayne's World with ice hockey but you know this time with a website anyway uh right anyway um the coach of the team, the opposing team, notices his ability to fight and decides to offer him a tryout for this team to be a ice hockey player whose sole purpose is to essentially get into fights. This is because ice hockey is a wonderful game in that sense because there are rules to allow for punch-ups. Anyway, he gets then transferred to the coach's brother's team in Canada, in Nova Scotia to be precise, and basically he gets into sub-national hockey. So these guys actually play the game, but at the same time they're still not above having a nice little scrap in the middle of the ice. But basically he gets transferred to this team which are the typical underdogs, they haven't won a game in months, the captain's going through a divorce, the former star player is afraid of playing properly and instead has gone and spiralled into a pitiful state of self-abusement, really, he's abusing his body in every way possible. But this is because in the past the star player got knocked down by a aging goon of another teams. But anyway, this film is quite interesting because it shows you a lot more of Canada than you usually get to see. You get to go through different provinces and see the different provincial flags. Quebec being the most obvious because yeesh, you can't ignore that flag. But after watching this I did a little bit of research. Some of the Canadian province flags are nuts. Anyway, back to the OV. Basically, as this film goes, the plot is nice, it's interesting, it's something we haven't really seen before. Some of the dialogue does bring up poignant points, but particularly pertaining to the treatment of the military, because the aging guy meets up with the new guy and he points out to him that he's just a soldier and nobody likes soldiers when they stop bleeding well the public only likes soldiers till they stop bleeding for them which to some extent is a horrible but accurate representation of the treatment of soldiers throughout the centuries whenever they cease to be soldiers they veterans are generally just tossed aside as social garbage Anyway, uh, right. Tolman has got nice performance. His love interest is a nice one because she's a very plain girl and she really does see herself as a slut because she gets horny and sleeps with lots of guys. But she also knows it's wrong. But she falls in love with our hero and 
decide she doesn't want to do that anymore. And she feels like she can. Anyway, to be honest, this the character Sean, he's a nice guy. The character Sean plays is a nice guy. He's remarkably simple in his own way. But he's simple in the way we should all be simple. He's nice. I mean, honestly, it's a good thing he's in Canada, where, quite frankly, they're a lot nicer than the Americans. <laughs> General observation, but made by Americans, I will point out. Right, so... Suffice to say, the film goes... Eventually, he starts playing a little bit of hockey, and they, the morale improves, and eventually they're happy to be a team again. And, you know, that's great. It works out quite nicely. But, you know, there's other bits too. There's some, I will point out there's some horribly graphic scenes in terms of violence and bloodshed. But at the same time, as bloody as it is, they keep it within the realms of reality. No one bleeds more than it's physically possible to bleed, so it's not like a slasher film, there's just occasional bits of graphic violence, but the graphic violence is suitable for the activity. And I like that. But yeah, overall, it's a nice little film. It's not ever going to be considered a remarkable classic, it might achieve a minor cult status, but... But at the same time, there's nothing truly awful about this. There's nothing that truly fails. It's just, at the end of the day, it's just not that. It's not a film for everybody. Anyway, so that's this week's review. I will see you next week. TTFM.